Hey, welcome everybody. Hey guys, it's a really great time to be here. Let me tell you why I'm excited that we're all here right now, because we have some great opportunities right now. Hey Colin. Colin, let's see, it's early in the morning there. It's, just, uh, it's almost noon, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me show you what I'm looking at right now. This is the trade that I think is probably, for me, uh, my, the most interesting setup at the moment. Yeah, that's what I thought. Colin, you're on London time. Check this out. This is what I'm uh, really excited about. Uh, and let me zoom in so you can see. All right, you're looking here at the pound, and one of the Hey, FX Hero made it. Hey there, FX Hero. This is what I'm this is what I'm looking at right now. Notice that we've had recent touches on this level. Uh, let me make it red so it's obvious. It's right it's right about at the it's the 5895. We can go ahead and call it 59 level. And you you'll notice that the market actually just moments ago, maybe an hour ago, just made a run down here. Now, I talked about this at the Naked Forum, um, which is a free forum, you know, that I have where I post naked trades and lots of other traders as well. We all post our naked trades there, um, and that's that's that. Uh, and you guys are welcome to come if you, if you like this stuff. It's NakedForexNow.com, and I, I posted this the other day. But basically, what I've been waiting for is since the market exploded up with this big candle. This was the candle last week, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. This was the candle on Monday, uh, on the first day of the week. It blew through where the market had originally found some resistance here, and we saw some resistance here, and we saw some resistance here. And now, the mar uh, market, uh, Colin says he loves the forum. Cool. It's good to hear that. So this is really this is it. This is what I'm this is what I'm waiting for. I believe that uh, the market's going to bounce off this level. Now, what happens if I'm wrong? Well, if I'm wrong, it's a really tight. Um, it, it's going to be a really tight stop. Now, it, because the reason why I like this is because if it does bounce here, it's going to really go, isn't it? And let me show you why I say that. Uh, let me go to. Let me back it up, actually. If you back it up a bit, let's see. If it goes, uh, if it bounces here and then really goes, uh, it's going to at least go to this high here, which, of course, is at 1.60. But beyond that, well, the next target really is at 60.80 over here where these candles turn around. And the line chart will show that right there. See the boom, boom, touch right there? Uh, and then we've got even, even up here, where this can't, where they turn around here, and that's at 6120. So from where we're at right now, that's over 100 pips. So let's say that I break it down and I go, okay, I'm just going to take this trade, and I'm going to like, I'm going to use a really tight stop. Okay, let's say I'm going to do that, and I go, I'm going to wait for the one-hour chart to give me a nice bounce here, or even the four-hour chart. So I want to use a four-hour chart. Four-hour chart gives me a nice bounce. We don't have it just yet. But if we got something really, really nice, a nice bounce off this level, I would be more than happy, like a kangaroo tail, right? Be more than happy taking that trade and trading it all the way up to 60 or 6080 or even 6150. And with like a 30 pip or 40 pip stop, that means I'm going to make 3 to 1 my reward group to this, or 4 to 1 or something like that. It's going to be an excellent uh, trade, you know, over the long run. Now, the great thing about it is I don't really need to watch it. If I do take this trade, there's no reason for me to sit around and watch the trade. I can manage it off the daily chart. So let's say, let's say I get a really nice one-hour uh, trade setup here, and I get a really nice one-hour candle, like a big bullish engulfing or something like that, like a big shadow, right? And that takes out a couple of these candles. I could use that as my entry signal, and then I could go to my daily chart and look for my daily chart and wait for the market to give me something really nice, like a really nice exit. You know, like let's say the market then comes up to this area here, 
right here, this orange area, this was the 1.6080 level, which is where the, where the last time the market turned around up here, right up here. Let's say it gets there and puts a bearish candle. Well, then guess what? You know, I can, that, that's fine. I can dump it right there. If the daily candles come up there and do that. Or, or it could go even further. Let's say the market goes further and goes all the way up to this level up here at 6150 and then points the bearish channel. Well, then I can dump it there. The idea here that I'm getting at is that I can get in on a bounce off this level on a lower time frame and expand my reward to risk ratio by managing the exit on a higher time frame. That's really what I'm talking about. And I think this is something that, um, you know, we only need three, of, three out of ten of these to work and we're profitable, right? And what, why do I say that? Because if we have, say we have 10 trades and we risk, you know, we risk $100 on each of those trades and seven of those trades are losers, we lose 700 bucks. And then on the three winners, if we go to three to one reward to risk ratio, then that means we make $900 on those, on those three winning trades. So we're up 200 bucks. And that's only with 30% win rate. And I think we can do a lot better than that. I think that um, playing these levels, and again, the reason why I think this is such a great level is because we've just seen repeatedly the market turn around. It wasn't once, it wasn't twice, it's multiple times. Even back here, and I've got all these arrows in the way. <laughs> Excuse the arrows. Even back here, we had bounces off this level, this red level here, with 58.9, 1.5895 level, or 50 million. So we have resistance, 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 and it should be support here. I would not be shocked if it was support. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But again, the fact is, if I'm right three out of seven times, it's a winning, you know, winning thing here. Because if I do take the trade, I'm not going to just get out like, you know, 50 pips. It's going to be, I'm going to trade it all the way up to at least here or here. So it's going to be like a three to one. Reward to risk ratio. Are there any questions about about this trade here? It's just it's basically just playing a bounce. It's playing a bounce where one foot uh, resistance is now support. That's really what it's all about. Okay, cool. Um, are there any other are there any, any other charts that people would like to take a look at? We've got a really nice looking um, consolidation area here on the uh, on the Swifty. So what may happen here, I'm looking at the Twitty one hour chart. You see the Twitty's been in a bit of a bit of a down move lately. Um, let me back it up so you can see if we can be more clear here. Uh, for those of you that are trend line fanatics, perhaps you draw some trend lines here, something like that. But the point is that the pair has definitely been, you know, moving lower and lower and lower. The Aussie pound says column. Yeah, we'll check that one out. Okay. So uh, one way to play this, the Swissy would be, I'd wait for the market to close outside this box, probably to the downside, but either way would work. And if it closes outside the box, then I wait for it to come back up and touch the box. Yeah, and, and, and give me a bearish candle. I'll give you an example of this in the opposite. Before we go to the uh, Aussie pound, I think I have the pound Aussie column. I have the pound Aussie here, but let me go to the Aussie really quick and give you an example of that sort of trade that I'm looking at, possibly on the uh, Swifty. So here we have the Aussie daily chart, and we had that sort of same sort of deal here where we had all this consolidation here. The market broke out, and what I wanted to see was the market come back up and touch the edge of the box. This candle didn't count because it this one, this touch here doesn't count because it actually touched it, it closed back in the box. So where I had the box drawn here is, means that once the market came back up to the edge of that box, uh, that doesn't work for me. I can't, I can't take that, you know, I'll show you, right? Okay, so we're out of the box here. So now I'm waiting for the market to come back up and kiss the edge of the box and print a bearish candle. But boom, it actually closes inside the box, so the trade's over. So I have to wait for it to come back and kiss the edge of the box again. And okay, so now we kiss the edge of the box, and there's our bearish candle. That's the signal candle there. And so my stop loss goes at the midpoint right here of the box, and uh, target down here, 
you can see was achieved. Uh, and then we can move our stop to break even. Then we would have been stopped out at break even here or here because uh, the market actually came back. And now we're look, actually looking bearish again, like we're going to make another run down to 103.60 on the Aussie. It's a pretty serious level of support resistance. If you go back, you'll see all these touches here, here, there's a touch there, all these here, there, there. So it's a critical level. I do think it will eventually get out of there. Possibly even this week. So that, um, I mean, I think the Aussie's in trouble. But let's go to the pound Aussie because Colin says, "Wow, look at the look at that one." This one was a similar setup, although again, uh, it, this candle here, so sort of this breakout and last kiss style. But the but this candle here closed back in the box for me, so that unfortunately I I couldn't take that trade as a as a buy off that breakout. Um, but right now it's very interesting because, wow, look at this. The, um, I mean, for me, I would say that, you know, that the market, the market's really, I'll talk about that in a second, trying trader. That's a great question. For me, what's happened is the market's gone beyond this level, but. I, which is, I have it at 52.60, 1.5260. If, if I were uh, interested in taking a trade here on the pound Aussie, what I would probably do is this. I'd wait for the market to close beyond this level, mess around around here, and then come back down here and print a bullish daily candle or four hour candle off of these highs here. So basically off of this zone again. This support and resistance zone would be where I would want to buy. Uh, alternatively, if it made it all the way up to 5660, I'd probably be uh, pretty interested in the sell signal. I could possibly sell 5450, but um, I'm not sure that that, oh yeah, that's a pretty good spot. We've got some recent action there, but I would prefer to wait for 5660 because we've seen more recent touches. There's one there, a couple there. I think that's, and there's one down here. I think that's a, a stronger level, that 5660 um, is a little bit stronger than the 5450, in my opinion. That's my opinion, of course. Yeah, Ray, you're right about the Euro Aussie. We'll take a look at that one because that one's really nice looking. Let's look at the question that Trying Trader had. He said, Can you please elaborate on returning to um, returning to the box? before you trade. Why will you not trade it if it enters the box? Well, here's why. I'll show you. The best way to illustrate this, which is, that's a great question, trying trader. For me, I kind of I kind of like, like high probability trades. And so for me, the most important thing is that the market um, goes my way. <laughs> and the way that I get around these breakouts that are so, there's so many fake outs out there way to get around them is by using this these specific rules. And the best way to illustrate this trying trader um, is this chart here, which is obviously the, the yen. Uh, and this is how the yen basically was in a box on my chart from August of 2011 all the way through to just, you know, end of February. Okay? So for me, I was waiting for a last kiss trade off of this, you know, area for a long time. Now, this is why I don't take standard breakouts or why I don't want to see it close back in the box. I'll show you. Okay, here's a fake out here. The market never closed outside the box. So some people definitely would have sold here uh, on a breakout. Uh, certainly people got caught here. See, when it, when it closes outside the box, um, to me, this is a signal that's going to break out. But I need to I need to see the market come back there and print again. Okay, okay, Ben Rowe, yeah. You, we, you know, anyone here who does not have the rules for the last kiss trade, certainly email me, right? And I'll send you the book. It's, it's, there's a whole book about it. It's, uh, it's Walter at fxjake.com. You can email me, and I'll send you the rules. But we need to go over the rules real quickly right right here. So. The whole reason why I use this last kiss strategy is I don't want to get in on this losing trade 
on these, this losing breakout, on this losing breakout even, or on this losing breakout. So how I draw the box is I essentially look for where the market is bound. Uh, and I need to see uh, you know, a level of support and resistance. And the easiest way to draw my levels is to use a line chart. I believe that when I first started drawing this box, it actually looked like this, okay? And then um, after this move here, I actually expanded the box because I said, okay, well, we've got a new ceiling on our box. So I included it there. And you can see that it actually respected it over here as well if you go to the candle. You can see uh, once I did expand it a bit, it did, it did include these here. So it made sense and these here. So, so uh, that's basically how I draw the box spin row is I, I, I essentially go to the line chart and that's how I draw all these support and resistance bands is I go to the line chart, I wait for the bends in the chart, which just connects to closing prices, and then I draw my box that way. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. No worries. And actually there's a book uh, on that called Hot, it's about uh, Hot Pizza and it talks about how I draw these zones. I can give you that one too if you want about drawing support and resistance zones. It's called Hot Pizza. Okay. So um, th that's a fake out, fake out, fake out. Now, this one could have been a breakout with a last kiss, but notice how the market closed back in the box. So it's, it's no good, right? I need to see it respect that support and resistance level that was so well defined while, mar while the market was trapped in the box. Um, do you not include the extreme spikes in the box? Yeah, it's a good question, trying trader. Over time, I've basically come to the conclusion that the closing prices are more important to me than the highs and the lows. And the reason why I say that, and this has been a long time coming, the reason why, I, and so yes, I guess to answer your question, I would say the spikes are not as important to me. The reason why is I use this line chart so often to find my zone, my support and resistance zone. So if I'm going to use a line chart, line chart obviously connects closing prices. It doesn't have anything to do with the higher or the low. It's just this close to that close, right? You can see here, there's this close, there's that close. So that's what, what, what the, why the line bend is right there. So yeah, so the spikes are interesting to me, but unless the market closes outside the box, I'm not really that concerned with, you know, that price movement. Um, so this was an interesting move, but it didn't end up as a last case. This was an interesting move, wasn't a last case. This also just closed outside the box, but it wasn't a last case. No move, no move. Down over here, we got another interesting move. But again, the market needs to trade away from the box, come back up, touch the edge of the box, and then print a bearish candle, and then I sell. Same thing here. Uh, on the daily chart, the market still hasn't come back and, and kissed this box here. So I did not get in on this breakout. So sometimes what happens is you miss these really big moves, but I think it's, a, it's an okay trade-off because I miss out on a lot of losing breakouts by waiting for this market to come back and kiss the edge of the box. Now, if I were trading a lower time frame chart, would I have an opportunity to take a trade here? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take a look. Uh, that's 15th of, um, 15th of Feb. Let's take a look at that. I want to see if we had something on a lower time frame. Uh, not really. No, not really. I was hoping that this was going to be a last kiss in the one hour, but it's not. Could maybe it was in the four hour, but I doubt it. Oh, yes, it certainly was. Okay, take a look at this. Uh, this is an example of where the daily chart didn't give us a last kiss, but the four hour chart did. So here we have this candle. Let me zoom in so everyone can see and get rid of this line. Everyone can see this on the four hour. Okay. The market's broken out of the box here and closed outside the box. It spent several candles outside the box here. Then it comes back down and prints a nice kangaroo tail here. Again, it closes outside the box just. And then let's say we wanted to wait for a bullish candle. Well, we've got it right here with this bullish kangaroo tail. Uh, Trying Trader says, would you enter on a continuation past the initial breakout thrust bar? So basically, Trying Trader, you're, you're saying, what if the market uh, broke above this candle right here, right? Is that what you're saying? What if the market 
took out this high on the breakup candle. Yeah, no, I, I much rather prefer, for me, and I know people do that, but for me, I want to see this touch here. And this bend on the chart, that to me is so critical to see. I need to see this much right here. I need to see that much. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, is the market to break out, come back down, and what was once resistance becomes support. A lot like the pound, right? What was once resistance on the pound should now be support. It's a very similar concept. So uh, the four hours certainly gave us a, a, a trade here. It went to this zone here. It kangaroo tailed on this zone there. Uh, and then obviously kangaroo tail on this zone there. You know, even these counter trend kangaroo tails even had small movements. Uh, this one's a little bit better. But uh, so certainly the, the um, four hour would have been pretty cool. Four hour would have been pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, so that's the last kiss trade in the nutshell. Uh, what I do miss out on, I miss out on a lot of fake outs, and I also miss out occasionally on those when the market just busts out of the box, keeps going, and never comes back. So on the four hour, I would have caught this, but unfortunately, I was watching on the daily, and I did not catch this yen breakout, even though I've been waiting for, you know, seven months or whatever, waiting for a long time on that one. Uh, what was the other one? Euro Aussie, right? Someone wanted to take a look at the Euro Aussie. That one is pretty cool. Boy, I am really excited about this pair because see if it reaches this, see where these arrows are right here? If the Euro Aussie gets up to, to this area, I'm going to be excited about a potential sell trade. Um, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to be so excited. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because this spot here, this 1.30 level on the Euro Aussie, We've seen kangaroo tail support, uh, bullish big shadow uh, support. We saw some support here, several touches before it finally broke through. And now this is going to be the first time that the market's come back to this level, hopefully over the next week or so. And guess what? Um, if this prints a bearish candle there, I'm not going to be shy about shorting it. And, uh, and I'm going to hopefully take it all the way down to at least this level. You know, that could be like 300 pip trade. See, I shorted around here. You know, with a hundred pips stop or something, you know, that could be hundred pips stop, three hundred pips of reward. Could even come down further, another three hundred pips down at this level. So it'll be really interesting to watch this one. I know I've been waiting and waiting and waiting on that one. Let's take a look at gold because Sylvester says let's check it out. Um, I know it had sort of a sort of like a head and shoulders type situation going on on gold. Uh, Actually, silver was a little bit better. Not not so much on gold. Silver looked a little bit better than this. Uh, okay, so on my chart on gold, what I see is a breakout above this 1679 zone right here. Now, what I would like to see here is I would like to see this candle close above 1679. And that would give me a, a reason to think that gold's going to go up. Now, obviously, we have the king retail down. Is that a king retail? Actually, I may not, may not fit the king retail rule. Let's see here. Close 164554, and the low here 164650. Yeah, I missed it by a dollar. So this was not a king retail. Why? Because the previous candle here, because uh, uh, the, the close of the king retail was not inside the previous candle's range. That did not qualify, unfortunately. However, I would say that given where gold's at right now, um, if this, looking at this big bullish candle here, if I wanted to trade this sort of as a breakout, I would look for uh, I would look for the market to close above. In other words, where it is right now is bad. I want to see it close higher. And if that happens. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if it made a move all the way up to these lows right here, to this level right here. So these highs, these lows, and that would be about. Um, let's say it closes right here at 1687. That's about um, what is that? 30 bucks? Yeah, 30 bucks, right? Yeah. So yeah, does that make sense, Sylvester? That's that's kind of how I see it. Don't really see anything really good on gold, but that. 
But if I had to trade gold, I'd do something like that. When in fact, what I could do is go down to the four hour chart. Yeah, like we could get a we could get a nice candle here moving on the four hour chart. Although, yeah, it's kind of sagging right now. Yeah, maybe the one hour. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a nice bullish candle here, but then it's done this bearish thing, so a bit sloppy at the moment. Yeah. However, I will say this. The silver one's even better. Let me show you silver. If you trade gold, you could also tr possibly trade silver. Now, this one's interesting because we actually have a pretty nice, actually this chart, that chart doesn't have very good, um, and let me go to another one. I think I have a better chart on silver. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one's good. Um, Here's the thing about silver is that we had sort of the shoulder, head, shoulder formation, didn't we? Hey, I trade Mario. I trade the Aussie Kiwi. We had a brilliant, we've had a, a couple of brilliant daily king to retail setups on the Aussie, um, on the Aussie Kiwi. So we can look at that one. Sure, Mario. Hey, check this out. Shoulder, head, shoulder, and the market's broken below, come back up. So on silver here, if this closes below, uh, you know, if this candle here, say, closes below yesterday's candle, then I'd say it looks like, it, you know, on the line chart, we're going to see a bend. It's going to be a bend here away from this level. So that could be the beginning of a big tankage in silver. Uh, yeah, Mario, the Aussie Kiwi does have kind of a widespread. Now, um, it really depends on your, on your broker if you've got Sometimes you can get a sweet deal on your spreads if you, if you trade often or, you know, it depends on your account. But here you go. So you got a 25th spread on the Aussie Kiwi right now. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty bad, isn't it? So you got to go for big pits, go for weekly trades. Yeah. So that would be silver. Yeah, 12 pit spreads all right. Yeah, that's all right. Let's take a look at the Aussie Kiwi because we've had so many awesome trades lately. All right. Um, okay. This was the one I'm talking about right here. This was one that we were talking about actually on the on the Naked Forex Now .com forum. We were looking at this one here, and basically what I was saying was that given that we had a king's root tail here, um, I said the first place to worry about is sort of this, this green shaded area right here. And why would I say that? Well, look, we've had bounces here, 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 and there. We've had both support, 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 and resistance, resistance. So that was my first spot. It was kind of close. But then I said, if you could break through there, you can go all the way down to this sort of this other area here. We had a lot of bounces, and that's right here in this area here. And that's uh, bounce, 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 bounce. And this one, wow, it went all the way down there as well. So yeah, it might have a 12 pit, 20 pit spread, but you're talking about 50, and now you're talking about 150 on this on this trade. So with the with the daily chart, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So right now, I mean, what can we do right now? Well, one way to do one way to look at this one would be again, I wouldn't be surprised if this if this market. Let's see. Let me get this right here. Okay. What if the market came back up to 1.28 and printed a bearish candle? What if the market, and I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Like, I'm talking like two weeks from now, three weeks from now. What if the market came back up and touched this level and bearish candle? That would be a great place to sell. And again, notice that we've had some touches back here in the past. And here, and here. I mean, these all line up. It's amazing that price has a memory that this reversal here turned out to be that reversal turned out to be that reversal, and even this candle closed on it on the way up. We couldn't get through it on the way up. And then boom, we got another reversal here, and then we got another touch here, another touch there, and so on. So there you go. Um, what else have we got happening? What about the Kiwi? Yeah, I don't know about the Kiwi. If I were trading the Kiwi, I would do this. I would go, well, Kind of in a box here. 
wait for a breakout. That's what I would do on the keyboard. I'd, wa I'd wait for a breakout. Anyone else want to look at some, some more charts? Any other charts you'd be interested in? Taking a look at, at the moment? Uh, the pancake. That's a trade that I, um, Hardy says in one of your webinars, you mentioned the pancake. Do you have an ebook on that? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I'm sorry, Hardy, I don't give that one away. <laughs> I only talk about the free stuff here, right? Um, that's one of my, my near and dearest to my heart. Um, I do offer that, but it's, it's not a free one. Sorry, Hardy. The Aussie. Mario wants to take a look at the Aussie. Okay, let's take a look at the Aussie. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, so we talked about the last kiss possibility on the Aussie. And so we had a breakout here, but didn't quite get the last kiss here. The close was just a little bit too high for me. Did get the last kiss here. Now we're making lower lows. For those of you that are trend line fanatics, you might be looking at this going, ah, there you go. Maybe we've got something happening here. I, I'm worried about the 104.20 level here where we've seen some recent uh, resistance and support. It, it needs to break and close well below this. If it does, then we're off to the races because then guess what? We don't have anything until at least this level here. And that's around 103. So basically where it bounced right there. That's where it was. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 the Aussie is not going to, for, for me, the, I am, I'm totally bearish to Aussie. Being in Australia, I think it's, I can, you can, the handwriting is on the wall. The, uh, the Aussie economy is in trouble right now. So the Aussie dollar is definitely going to take a tumble. Yeah. Euro pound, Euro pound's a mess on the daily chart. For me, the Euro pound is a total mess. Yeah, I mean, for me, the euro pound has to break out of like 84 for me to be interested. Or if it if it closes below 83. Yeah, I, I don't want to. Now, having said that, can we trade it on a lower time frame? Absolutely. We could we could trade we could trade like crazy on a lower time frame. You know, selling it up at 84 if we get a nice kangaroo tail, or buying it down here or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the hourly. I mean, we could do that. But I don't have I don't have anything on the hourly. I mean, this looks like it's headed for 84. This move right here on the hourly, this is a this looks like it, it looks like he wants to go up. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Are there any other uh, any other tr any other charts that anyone wants to take a take a look at while we're here? Any other interesting setups? Manoj says, do you only really get interested in trades if there's space on the left-hand side? Yeah, I, I think those are the best. That's why I like this Euro Aussie Minaj. See how the Euro Aussie, I mean, Euro Aussie, there's two basic spots where I might get a sell signal. One is where it is right here, because we've seen some recent support there. Two is up at 1.30, like we talked about earlier. The reason why I like it so much is that there's all this room here on the chart. When the market gets in a place where it hasn't been in a while, I mean, and therefore you have all this room to the left. To me, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> Mario says, does anyone trade anything with the Swissy nowadays? <laughs> um, I don't know. What is the Swissy? Yeah, that's pretty good. We had a trade actually that I, uh, we had a trade on the forum, and it was this one right here. It was a bullish big shadow, this candle right here. And I think it, I don't know, it made a lot. It did really well. We were watching this one on the nakedforexnow.com forum. So the first target was like 100, then 160, and the third target was like 290. So that was, a, but that was, that was last month. Yeah. So I guess not this month, Mario. But I, you know, Swissy is pretty. The Swissy uh, on the lower time frame, hey, you know, 90. 9070, that's a pretty strong area of support back here. If it got up there, that might be right for itself. Who knows? Yeah. 
Okay. Hey, Colin, I'll send you an email. I'll send you an email right now. Hope that makes sense, Mario. All right, guys. I think we're running out of time. I think this is it. I hope that works, Mario. All right, guys. If you want the last kiss trade, you can always email me. I'll give you the book if you're interested. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Trying Trader. Have a great day. Thank you. See you, see you Eddie. Bye, Guillaume. Bye, Boss Jeff and Hardy. Chantal. Take care, guys. See you, Rod. See you later, Hans. It's Walter at fxjakes.com if you want the book. Ben Rowe. Walter at fxjakes.com. Thanks, guys. See you later, everyone.